Welcome YouTube family and welcome to another video of the Kevin Strong show. And in this video, we're going to talk about how paychecks are just misery. They keep us in prison. We can't get out of the rat race. We're going to talk about that and we're going to do it by way of showing a video that talks about motivation and how you get out of it. Stick to the end of this video. As you guys know, Thailand is on my short list. So I'm going to show you a luxurious upscale place on the beach called Koh Samai, uh, second biggest island in Thailand, and is Warren Buffett signaling something that a lot of us who are predicting a housing market crash may not happen. If you're new to the show, welcome. I'm going to start off by saying hitting that like button, hit the bell notification so you are notified when I do release my videos, which is typically on a Saturday once a week. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. This is going to be very, very interesting. And I think a lot of people, even after watching this video, are still going to become creatures or habit and not do anything to get out of the rat race. Okay, let's see here. There we go. All right, let me go ahead and switch over here. And this is about quitting your job or trying to get out of the rat race and things of that nature and the psychology behind all of it. It's of quiet desperation. It's one of my favorite quotes ever because it's true. You just, you're just in this world where you just can't wait to just run away. But I think one of the reasons why these people have this deep-seated anger and resentment is there's a bunch of people out there that have these lives that are deeply unsatisfying. Because I think there are so many people that are working all day long doing something that is deeply unsatisfying and, and almost painful yeah, to them. Yeah, soul killing. Soul killing. Yeah. They're stuck in traffic all day and then they're stuck in a cubicle after that. They, 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 they relish the time to take a sh in the bathroom and look at their phone. I mean, they literally do that. That's a, a highlight of someone's day. So let's let's take a break here. How many of you can relate to what Joe Rogan is talking about? And a lot of times um, we justify this this insane way of living with materialism. And those who know me on a close personal level know I despise pretentiousness. I despise it. Everybody eventually is going to take that proverbial dirt nap. So I don't understand this insatiable appetite once you accumulate a certain amount of wealth to be overtly obnoxious with it, have a superiority complex, or assume that you're entitled to something because you worked hard at it. You're entitled to benefit from the fruits of your own labor. 100%. I'm all for and a strong advocate of capitalism. But let's not get it twisted. A lot of people internalize that to truly believe that there's something special. And the circle of life makes all of us look at things for what it really is. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. And there's a couple of points that I want to hit out and talk about. And I'm going to, like I said, talk about this situation in Thailand and then make a comment about what Warren Buffett is doing, where a lot of us, yours truly, might have to eat a little bit of crow about the housing market. And if you feel like that, that alone can be incredibly defining and limiting. But if you can look at, if you look at yourself objectively and say, okay, I'm in credit card debt, I'm working in a shitty job, I, I, I don't like what I'm doing, but I have some ideas. I need to feed those ideas. I, have, I, I need to feed them and water them, and I need to set aside a certain amount of time every day to just try to make those things happen. You can do that. Everyone has a different personality. They have different, different interests, different, different things that they would be really satisfied pursuing. That's not encouraged. They so what Joe Rogan, once again, is talking about, if you are in a situation where your paycheck is your misery or you have a job that you're uncomfortable with, they've got this thing that started last year that talked about quiet quitting. That's all fine and dandy. But come up with an exit strategy. Or if you really have to do something out of a moral obligation because you got a family, kids, and all the other stuff, I understand that. But at the end of the day, you could be transitioning something on your spare time 
to get out of the rat race. Or if you do ultimately have to make that sacrifice for someone else, at least have something to show for it instead of not to get on my health kick hit, um, rant again. But don't don't work 20, 30, 40 years just to say F the man. And then all of a sudden what happened to John? Well, John spends most of his time uh taking pills and seeing the doctor because he just abused his body. So if you're going to sacrifice and be in a situation where you're unhappy in the job, at least do something about your health. So when you can remove yourself from that situation permanently, you and your significant or uh, other can have some type of quality of life after that. Let's see if I can find this other part here. And... 51-year-old father of three married man pays taxes has a house and a mortgage and a business and all that jazz if i had to quit everything now and struggle the way i struggled as a stand-up comedian it would never work but the only way i could be this person now is if i took that chance when i was 21 when i was dead broke and had my cars repossessed and all that stuff that's the only way you you ever get where you want to go you have to you have to take a path that's dangerous and most people want to take the safe path. So once again, I happen to agree with this. There's a lot of us that are at a certain point in our life that we can't throw caution against the wind and just say, hell with it, roll the dice, because there's those moral obligations. You know, you've got luxury and you've got moral obligations. You have the luxury to kind of go after your dreams and aspirations when you're younger. As you get older, you have to be a little bit more calculated with that. It does not mean you can't do it. But once again, quiet quitting or transitioning or having a side hustle, side hustle huh, that you actually are trying to monetize to replace your current income is a practical way of getting out of the rat race even later in life. But the key, the linchpin to all of this, ladies and gentlemen, is that you have to learn to live not only significantly below your means, Understand that that is how you embrace a quality of life. Mobility is freedom. Money isn't freedom. Mobility is freedom. Now, one would counter and say, hey, money gives you freedom. Well, maybe it depends upon the type of job you have. Once again, if you make four or $500,000 a year, but you have a high consumption lifestyle that's commiserate with that high income, you don't have a lot of money left over at the end of the day. So you're married to that lifestyle. It's like having one cable channel. <laughs> you better be damn sure you like that show because nothing else is coming on. So we're going to go ahead and move this on a little bit. And uh, let's see what the other point here. I'm just going to go to the end because I just a couple other things I want to talk to you guys about. Absolutely nothing. I promise you when you've tasted both, when you both, when you meet people that have tasted both, I make 180,000 a year and I have stuff, but I'm not happy. And then I went making 94,000 a year, but I'm doing what I love and I'm super happy and I have a little less stuff. It's not even close to a debate. So I implore all of you, to really dig deep inside of yourselves and try to figure out why you need that stuff. I'm gonna save you time. You're trying to close an insecurity gap. Let me give you another huge hint. He's right. Everybody else sucks too, so do you. If you're 21 and you have no expenses and you're living at home, you Okay, I, I really agree with that. That's Gary Vee or whatever. I'm a big component of that. You know, I've done videos talking about, you know, uh, car versus time. You basically use a car in terms of an hourly rate. You're probably in your car two or three days out of the month, yet, yet and still it represents, what, a $700, sometimes a $1,000 car payment. I've seen various studies that basically say, hey, what's the functionality of uh, living in your home? Some of us only live, maybe use about 20 to maybe on the max end, 40% of the house. What do you need 3,500 square feet for? when you're only using 1800, but the 1800 doesn't feel good. But from a practical standpoint, that's all you need. But despite that, do we do that? Do we basically cut down on our, on our lifestyle? We don't, we want bigger, we want better. We want that look of affirmation from somebody when we stop at a stoplight that says, wow, look at that. That's a really nice car. But is that really truly bringing you happiness. And I'm not trying to be here and make an advocate of saying there's some honor in poverty. I'm saying 
You want to become a minimalist. You want to be able to have a good income, live well below your means and have the flexibility to enjoy life without feeling um, very stressful. And I just don't think at the end of the day, most people are going to be able to do that because inflation is not going away, ladies and gentlemen. It's just a sad situation. So I'm going to transition over here to this, this really, really breathtaking place that I was looking at in Thailand. And then I'm going to give you my thoughts about Warren Buffett and how he may be on to something in terms of the housing market. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, let's see. Now this is for this is a little bit over two thousand dollars a month. Koh uh, like I say, second biggest island in Thailand, and oh, breathtaking, breathtaking. This is what I'm talking about: getting out of the rat race and living like this. If I can get this thing to act right, here we go. And look at that. So we're going to go through these pictures real quick, then I'm going to come back and give you my thoughts about Warren Buffett, and then we're going to call it a day for the video. This is all one place for about $2,200 a month on an island, blue waters on a beach. You can live on this island. I'll do another video um, down the road. You can live on this island for about $300. And I'm saying a very, very nice place with maid service. You heard that right. $300 US dollars. This one's about $2,200, which is in line with what the average rent price is in the United States. We only got a couple more pictures here, three more. This is all one place. Huh. Don't be surprised if your temperature starts to rise. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So that, once again, is on my short list. Uh, I'm looking at a couple other things. Like I said, some tax situations. What makes Thailand so, so enticing besides the, the negative thing is it, it's hot. It's like it's slave hot. No pun intended there. <laughs> I shouldn't trigger myself. But all jokes aside, it's hot. And I'm going to find out how hot it is because more than likely I am going to take a, a trip over there in July of 2024. But the good thing about it is that if you have social security or a pension, they don't tax it 100% tax free. And there's a way you can structure if you have an online business, which is some things I'm going to start to do and scale up that as long as you don't bring that money back into Thailand in the same year that you earn that money, you don't pay any taxes on it. So there's a lot of, lot of, lot of upscale things. So finally, I wanted to end with Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett putting a lot of investment in some of these home builder stocks. He's a value proposition type investor. Iconic, arguably one of the best of all times. Some people think that this housing market that some of us have been predicting is going to crash, is never going to crash to the point where what it did in 2008. I say, let's wait a little bit, but if these home prices do not start to show a significant pullback by the first quarter of 2024, <sighs> A lot of us are going to have to get on YouTube and probably eat some crow. But that remains to be seen because I think we're going to go into some very treacherous times. We all know about the all-time consumer debt, what uh, student loan repayments are going to start doing to folks in October. So let's wait and see. But Warren Buffett has put a lot of, lot of money in new home builder stock. And he's a value guy, so he must see a lot of upside in the long run. Finally, last but not least, within the next 45 days, I am launching a student loan consulting part of Strong Jacobs & Associates. We're going to be dealing with student loan consultations for federal student loans and helping you negotiate with private student loan lenders. The website is not up yet, but it's down here below. It's called ReduceStudentLoans.net. Very excited about this. Those of you that follow my company know that I have probably almost over 20 years of debt management and debt settlement experience. So we're going to, hopefully we're going to be able to help a lot of people and help them get a quality of life. I'm going to end this video with my famous slogan, keep your credit score up and your debt down. This was the Kevin Strong Show. I appreciate your time. Hit the like button before you click off this video. Hit the bell notification and share the video. I hope to see you in my next one.